And I've heard this argument before, like you might think like, oh, well, they can't prove it, so they can't get mad. That's wrong. This episode was requested by my patron, Nikki Marie. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about metagaming. Hey, it's been a while since we talked about metagaming. I talked about it in a super early video, link in the card, but now we are finally coming back around to it to give it the attention it deserves. Metagaming is one of those roleplay things that is pretty universally reviled. Basically, everyone says, please don't do it. So today we're going to talk about what metagaming is, why it's so hated, and when you actually should do it. Metagaming is when someone uses out-of-character or real-life knowledge to affect the decisions and actions of their character. For example, let's say you're role-playing a fight between two characters, and you know from reading the other person's character sheet that their character has a leg injury, they have a weakness in their leg, and so you know if your character hits them in just the right spot on that leg, they're going to be more injured than they might otherwise be from similar blows. This is out of character knowledge. If your character has no plausible way of knowing this information, you can't have them purposefully hit that spot on the other character's leg. If you do, you're metagaming, and the other player might feel that the fight's now unfair. But it doesn't just apply to combat text-based roleplay, it also applies to things like solving puzzles in a tabletop game. This could be overt cheating, like looking at the DM's notes when you're not supposed to. Or maybe more covert cheating, like knowledge that you have about the setting that the game is in that your character doesn't necessarily have access to. For example, if your character is from a small town in the middle of nowhere and they never really had the opportunity or inclination in life to like do a lot of research or reading, then they're not going to know the intricacies of the social customs for some city that exists all the way across the map from where they grew up. But you as the player, of course, would have that knowledge if you're very familiar with the setting. And metagaming can even apply to video games. Say that you're playing couch co-op with your friend split screen. You're supposed to focus on your screen, and if you spend too much time looking at your opponent's screen, well, that's also metagaming. But in the narrative text-based roleplay that I am primarily talking about, that we primarily do, I see this manifest in one very specific way over and over and over again. And that's when it comes to winning roleplay friends and making roleplay enemies. In text-based roleplay, the most common metagaming I come across is when someone decides to make their character be rude or violent towards another character because they as the player don't like the other player for that other character. And people will do this out of nowhere when it makes no sense for the character to do it. So when it comes to text-based roleplay, you shouldn't make your character feel a certain way about another character because of how you feel about the other writer. This is metagaming. Metagaming is considered, quite simply, cheating by most of the roleplay community. In roleplay, your writing is supposed to be from the point of view of your character. You're supposed to subsume the role of your character and write everything from their perspective. When you bring in knowledge that your character doesn't have, it's immersion breaking for the person that has to read that response and then reply to it themselves. And that breaks the whole illusion of roleplay and ruins the fun for a lot of people. So metagaming is bad in general, and it's not uncommon to see it as a rule for a group that you might want to join, or in someone's one-on-one -on -one rules that they might put out when they're looking for partners. But it's also so universally bad that often you won't even see it in the rules, even though it's still a no-no. Yes, it is that frowned upon that a lot of role players don't even feel the need to mention it as something that's against the rules. Also, we have to remember that roleplay exists as an interpersonal relationship between the different role players. And a real fast way to break down social cohesion is to have your character hate another character because you don't like that player. And I've heard this argument before, like you might think like, oh, well, they can't prove it, so they can't get mad. That's wrong. Humans are empathetic creatures, and they'll be able to tell, and it's right for them to get upset by that. Or you may not even know you're doing it. 
So if your dislike of a character just so happens to line up with your dislike of the person writing them, you really need to do some soul searching and figure out if that's realistic, if that's really what your character would do, or if maybe you're metagaming. If you find yourself doing mental gymnastics to justify your character's feelings, that's when you might be metagaming there. Okay, so I said all of that about metagaming, but I promise you it isn't always bad. If I know my roleplay partner enjoys a particular scenario or action, then it benefits me to figure out a way to shoehorn that into the plot or, or make my character do that, even if it's not exactly coherent or completely in character. And yes, this is using out of character knowledge, and I may have to jump through a few hoops to make this plausible for my character to do, but if I know it's gonna make my partner happy, it's a good thing. For example, say my character doesn't know the other character's favorite food, but we have this scenario where my character is going to cook their character a meal. If I, as the player out of character, know what that character's favorite food is, it's very cute for my character to guess somehow what their favorite food is and make it for them. So this is metagaming, but it's metagaming for positive results. And this is where out of character knowledge helps your roleplay, and you should do it sometimes. All right, so that's the metagaming video. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know down below about your experiences with metagaming and um, times maybe that you've done it or had it done to you. Uh, I know when I first started roleplaying, I really only saw metagaming in the negative sense, but the more I practiced and the more skilled I got at it, I realized I was often using metagaming for positive results. And I do think that's something we should continue to do as role players, even though metagaming in general is, you know, it's against the rules, right? But uh, let me know your experiences. I'm really curious down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.